Hello and welcome folks to part two of the uh, lesson or unit two project. We have created our text game. We have for the most part the setup complete. Really at this point we're setting up our different actions. Um, as you can see just to kind of review we have our floors. We have the stuff that's within those. We then start and we get the user kind of like that prompt. We have our game loop right here where we're looking at uh, the user input and then we are asking them what action they want to complete and we're checking every possible action. We have left and right set up so far and we need to set up the rest of the action. So here we have else if player is equal to up, we've got left and right covered and up is what happens if the user wants to go up a set of stairs that they see within a room. And I think the basics of the up and down is that we just want to check and see if they're actually able to. So I'm going to say if um, the floor list and if the stuff that's within that room, so the content of the room is, um, actually equal to, and let's go up and let's see what we actually named our stairs. So we're going to go ahead and copy stairs up. And if I go ahead and scroll down, I'm going to paste that. So the only way they would actually be able to go up is if there's stairs there, right? And if there are stairs there and they're able to go up, we're going to change player floor to player four plus equal to one. So we're just going to increment it. And then we're going to print out a statement saying you, um, what do we want to say? You take the stairs up one level. You are now on floor. We'll give a space and then we'll say, of course, uh, what floor the player's on, which we already have up here. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to do the same thing. Maybe if you wanted to in your own project, you could kind of create that as a variable that might be a little bit easier for you rather than copying and pasting the statement each time. But, um, you know, just to make this video as short as possible with the work that I have, we're going to go ahead and use that. And then of course, what if the player can't go up? Well, I think, you know, the easy thing for us is we're just going to be able to list an or and before I do that, I also want to fix some of my code up here real quick because it's giving me that error. I'm going to say otherwise, if the uh, user or if like there's no upstairs in that uh, in that room, I'm just going to say print uh, there's no upward stairs in this room. And it's simply just going to go back to the loop. It's going to allow the user to choose their action again. And I want to see what this I'm going to just give it a space right there. Um, the basic format for the downward uh, input is going to be pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to change stairs up to stairs down. And specifically, I want to make sure I, I copy and paste from up here because you can see like I want to make sure I have the exact same string because if I don't, I think my life gets a lot more difficult. And there's going to be bugs that I don't catch. Um, or I would say more of a logic error than a bug. So here I'm saying if the uh, player floor can actually go down, I'm going to go minus equals one to player floor. And it's gonna say you take the stairs down one level. You are now on whatever floor that is. And then I'll replace this to say there's no downward facing stairs in this room. I think that sounds a little bit better. And just like that, we have both the up and down input done. Um, grab an attack. I think it's going to be maybe a little bit trickier. One thing we want to do for the grab is, and we want to do the same for attack, is we actually want to set up the user's inventory. And to do that, we're just going to set up a very simple list. So here I go back up. I'm going to say player items, and I'm going to instantiate a list using these two square brackets. And we're going to later store stuff within that list. Um, so if the user is going to grab, I think the basics of what we want to check is three things. We want to check if there are magic stones on that floor in that room. We also want to check if there's a sword and we also want to check if there is the prize. The user doesn't get the prize automatically. I actually want them to have to pick it up. So here I'm going to say if, and I'm going to start by checking to see if we have the uh, magic stones or the sword in the room. So I'm going to say if player floor list is equal to this or if the same thing is equal to something else. And as soon as I get done copying and pasting it, 
I can tell you what I want. I want it to say here if the floor list player has the magic stones or the sword, we're gonna go ahead and add them to the list. And for both of those, I don't really think it like we need to differentiate. So I think it works perfect. So here, what I'm coming up to do is getting magic stones copied. And I'm going to paste that. And then I also wanna paste the sword. And I just wanna make sure I'm using these things to be exactly like what they are. Um, here, I'm going to say if those two things do exist, I want to say player items. We're going to use the dot append method for items, and I'm going to give it floor list, player floor, player room, and it will simply append that to my list. That's perfect. It's a string. We'll check that later when we go to attack. And what I'm also going to do is I want to overwrite what's in the room now. So I want to take this and I'm only copying one equal sign and I'm now going to say that there is nothing in that room and so that's perfect and I'll do that for both of them I think this if statement is set up the second if statement we want is else if that floor list is equal to the prize and I believe I'm just going to copy prize in from my notes because I have it this is when the user will win, so I'm going to set game status is equal to one. And I'm going to say the player input is equal to quit. And we're just gonna print out a simple statement. Print you won the game, comma, congratulations. And I wanna go to this and I also want to print a statement as well just to let the user know what happened. Um, I'm going to print this statement before I change what's in the room and I want to print and I want to say you grabbed the we're gonna say string for well we don't even need to for what the floor is so I'll just take this we're gonna tell them the user what they grabbed and then we're also going to say from the room so it sounds like a good complete sentence and then I'll overwrite everything is fine and dandy there we're also checking the next else if statement that is seeing if the user has a prize in here and if not I'm going to say else we're simply going to alert the user there is nothing in this room to grab and that's perfect so we've got the up and down input done as well as the grab input. Um, we're appending to our bag and we're gonna check that later for the enemies. And um, just give me a quick second and we'll check these last parts and we'll also do the end conditions in just a hot minute. So we're now working on finishing our game and finishing the attack method. So we're going to be doing this else if statement for what happens if we attack. We are then going to pretty much finish the game because I think once we have this attack function set up, that's pretty much all there is to it. I don't think, uh, I think we set the status to win, which we could check later, which you know what, we might not even end up needing. And then with the player input being set to quit on our end conditions, I think we will be set. So let me go ahead and finish this off. We're gonna say, if the player input is equal to tack, we want to check a couple things based on the uh, rubric that I have for the project. So if we want to attack the regular monsters, we need a sword to attack. If we try to attack them without the sword, we lose. If it is the boss monster who is right before the prize, we wanna make sure that we have the magic stones with us as well. So those are pretty simple if statements and we'll kind of work on them now. So I'm gonna say if floor list and I'm just gonna copy uh, player room. And you know what, I'm just gonna copy this right here. <clears throat> Let's make sure I actually do it properly. So floor list, player room, player floor is equal to uh, monster. I want to perform another check that is just basically saying if the player, we set up our item list earlier, um, and how I check that is I want to use the in keyword. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I kind of forgot for a second. I want to say if sword 
is in player items, and that's our basic syntax for checking if something is in a list, um, then we can defeat the monster. So I'm gonna say print, you have defeated the monster. And then I also want to vacate the room a lot like we did with our grab function. So here, I'm going to say that the room is now containing nothing. And that's perfect. So once we set that room to contain nothing, we no longer have to worry about the monster. The user has essentially erased them from existence. But if this is not true, then we want to basically kill the user. So we're gonna say print, you attempted to fight the monster and lost. And then we are going to say, um, player input is going to be equal to quit and the uh, game status is going to be equal to lost. And I think that should be it because we just need to check and see if the user has the normal sword um, for the regular monster. But our next set is going to be similar. So I'm going to copy this real quick. Right here, I'm saying if the uh, floor list player room player floor is equal to monster, do this. If not, I'm going to set this to, let's say, an else if statement. I'm going to check. And let's just go ahead and make sure I'm spelling monster right. I'm not saying monsters. That's fine right there. And I'm also going to check boss monster. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. And I'm going to replace monster with boss monster. Um, then we're saying if sword and player items right here. The only issue is for the boss monster, we also need the magic stones. So I'm gonna say, and magic stones in player items, then we should be able to defeat. So we're gonna say you defeated the boss monster. The room will be cleared. And here I'm just gonna say, you try to fight the boss monster and lost. And that should be it. I think virtually our game is done. Um, before we demo it completely, let's just make sure that we run. All right, so we can see that we run. We don't have any obvious errors off the bat. Um, and let's go ahead and test our code. So we've written our code and we have our project almost fully set up. Uh, what we want to do now is test it out. So we want to just play the game a little bit, figure out if there are any issues in our code, um, I can tell you just from you know having checked it already, of course, uh, off the video, that I believe this code pretty much works as it should. So if you've been following along, we should be set, but it's always important to check your code just to make sure that everything behaves as you expect it to, right? You could look at your code and say it's great, but you might have a logic error that you just might have not caught. So let's go ahead and say, uh, on this room, we're starting on floor one, um, room one, and as we can see, we know what's in this. So I'm gonna scroll up just to make our testing a little bit easier. We can kind of see what's in every room, right? So in this room, there's nothing, that's perfect. I want to say, if I go left, I get the correct error that I am in the leftmost room already. That is fine, I wanna go right. Um, there's magic stones here, if I grab them, you can see that the floor now has nothing. Um, of course, you know, in your project, you might wanna display that the uh, user has something in their bag or just what they have in there. Um, but here, we know that we have the magic stones now. And um, we're back in that same room. So I'm gonna go ahead and go right. And I am going to, instead of going up, I want to go right. I want to test my code for what happens when I try to attack a monster without a sword. If I'm correct, then we actually lose the game right there, right? Totally fine. We're going to go ahead and go back and run. And I'm going to go through it a little bit quickly this time. I want to go right. I want to grab. I want to go right. Uh, I want to take the stairs up. I believe I want to go left to get the sword, I'm gonna grab it. So now I have a sword and the magic stones. I'm gonna go right, um, stairs down. I wanna keep going right. I wanna attack the monster. Now we should defeat it. As you can see right here, that does indeed happen. So we're set. Um, now there's nothing in the room. I wanna go right. We have the stairs, I go up. We go up the stairs. We're now on the third floor and I wanna go left, left, left. And we have the boss monster. So for the boss monster, if I attack, since I picked up the magic stones and the sword, we defeated that monster. And if we go uh, left again, we finally find the prize. If I click grab, you can see the code quits. 
Um, the only things I think that are really left to test would be like if you want to try to go up or you try to attack or you try to do something in a room where it's not possible. Um, you know, if you're if you're working through this in your class, I would advise you to test as much as possible. Um, your teachers, you know, might be a pretty strict grader, so they might want to make sure that you've tested every single scenario. But uh, as far as the sake of the video, I think we're complete. I just advise that you test further. But thank you all very much for tuning in, and I hope that helped you complete the Unit 2 project. Thank you very much, and please like and subscribe.